Assalamu alaikum to all the audience and especially to my beloved respected brother Zakir Naik, Dr. Zakir Naik. It's been a long time since I see you. Last time I used to see you in Penang. Now you are no more for coming to Penang. You know, there are some problems. Okay. But I am from Penang. I come all the way to see you personally with my whole family. They want to see you live. <laughs> Masha Allah, always watching in TV. Now they want to see you live. Okay, Alhamdulillah. My question is, Masha Allah, the subject today is, Islam is a solution for humanity, but it is very unpleasant that we are seeing in this world today. What is happening in Syria? Muslims killing Muslims. What is happening in Yemen? Muslim killing Muslims. What is happen in, happening in... Uh, they're, they're like Myanmar, yes, we agree. Rohingyans, they have been killed mercilessly. We agree. But there is a solution. Now what are we Muslims are supposed to do? What is going on in Yemen? What is going on in Syria? This helpless man, woman and children being killed, murdered. What are we Muslims supposed to do? All over the world, we Muslims, what we are doing? So, please give a solution that what we are supposed to do, we Muslims. Apart from we making dua, tahajjud, we begging to Allah. And after that, as human beings, what are we supposed to do? Please, my dear brother, give a solution. The brother, the brother asked a very important question, a very relevant question, that today we find that in many of the Muslim countries, we find that there are wars and Muslims are being killed, whether it be Yemen, whether it be Syria, whether it be Rohingya, whether it be Afghanistan, whether it be Iraq, and most of these countries are Muslim countries. What is the solution besides doing dua? Number one, first we have to find out that what is the cause of most of these killings, whether it be in Afghanistan, whether it be in Iraq, whether it be in Rohingya Burma, whether lately it be in Syria or Yemen, what is the cause? The major cause is, again, the solution is given in the Quran. The cause is that we find that the enemies of Islam, the, my main focus of my talk today was that how the enemies of Islam are trying to malign Islam and how the enemies of Islam are justifying to attack the Muslim countries. I'll give you one simple example. You know that more than a decade earlier, USA said that Iraq has the weapons of mass destruction. And CIA, which is supposed to be one of the most best organization of intelligence, they said that we have got proof that Iraq has got weapons of mass destruction. Not that I'm a fan of Saddam Hussein. I know that he may not be a very good practicing Muslim, but what right does USA have to interfere with Iraq? They together with UK and the other Western countries attacked Iraq. Saying that they had weapons of mass destruction. Last year, according to the report by human rights organization, they said it was a fabricated report. So much so that Tony Blair, the previous Prime Minister of UK, came out in public when he was no longer the Prime Minister. He said, it is the biggest mistake of my life, I'm sorry. You know how many people were killed? More than half a million Iraqis and Muslims were killed because of this fabricated report. And what is the reply? Sorry. What are we Muslims doing? When the non-Muslims enemy attack a Muslim country, we Muslims are sitting on our backside doing nothing. And I think it is yesterday. 
the previous president of USA, W. Bush, at the age of 94, he expired. He was one of the cause for the start of the 9-11. Then followed by attack on Iraq by the next presidents of USA. This, what was the main purpose? Was to get hold of the oil of Iraq. They fabricate a thing and it was shown that they paid 540 million dollars. USA paid 540 million dollars to create a fabricated video to prove that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. 540 million dollars to make a video. We Muslims, what is the fault of the Muslims? We are not united. In Afghanistan, when Afghanistan had a war with Russia, Soviet Union, which was, an, which was enemy of USA, the USA takes help of the Muslim country along with Afghanistan to take out Russia. Hillary Clinton said in a video that they spent eight billion dollars in supporting the Afghanistan and creating Taliban to fight the Russian. They create and then say that they are terrorists. Who is the bigger terrorist? The person who does the act or one who creates? The person who makes the person a terrorist? Who is the bigger terrorist? What are we doing? Nothing. They sent clusters bomb in the country which is one of the weakest countries in the world, Afghanistan. They sent cluster bomb. The bomb goes down and then it disintegrates into various bombs, killing thousands, tens of thousands of Afghani. What did the Muslims do? Nothing. The problem is that we Muslims are united. All these what you find, all the war zone, when the Muslims are being killed, who is supporting the killing of the Muslims? Non Muslims. Who's the one who engineered most of the places? You'll find it's a fabricated things created by the news of Islam to attack the Muslim country, whether it be for oil, whether it be for money, whether it be for power, whether to attack or destroy the enemies. So previously, the biggest enemy of the USA before 9-11 was communism, was Russia. So they joined hands with the Muslim countries to take out Russia. The solution to this problem is given in the glorious Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103, where Allah says, Wa taseemu bihablillahi jamia wa la Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. The rope of Allah is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If we Muslims hold strongly to the rope of Allah and the authentic sayings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be on top of the world. If you read the history, before the Quran was revealed, the Arabs were looked down upon. It was called as Jawmil Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. After the Quran was revealed, the Arabs became on top of the world. If you read the seer of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Khulfa Rashidin, and after that, Muslim on top of the world. We rule half the world. And people welcomed us. Come to our country so that we get justice. The non-Muslims invited our Khalifas. Why? Because they wanted the unjust rule of their ruler to end. The Westerners say Islam was spread by the sword. Delisse already gives the reply in his book on page number eight, Islam at the Crossroad, that people who, <laughs> Delisse already said that history makes it clear, history makes it clear that the myth that Islam was spread by the sword is the most absurd, fantastic myth that the historians have ever repeated. It's a myth. At that time, the Muslims were united on the base of Quran and Sunnah. Today, we Muslims are divided. If the Muslim countries, there are more than 50 countries in the world in which majority people living are Muslims. If all the Muslim countries unite, we will be a very strong force. And if we implement the Quran, we will find this is the solution to the problems of humanity. Unfortunately, our beloved Prophet said that close to the Qiyamah, 
we will find that Muslims will be in large numbers. And we find today more than 25% of the world population are Muslim. And it's going to increase. But they will be like froth. Froth. Far away from the deen. And we find that today. Muslims are going further and further away from the deen. And this you are finding everywhere in the world. The country that we looked on upon, they are sticking to Quran and Sunnah. Today, they are going away from Quran and Sunnah. And the more they will go away from Quran and Sunnah, the more will be degraded, there will be more injustice in that country. Now, hardly there are countries in the world which we can say are Muslim countries that are following Quran and Sunnah. Hardly. So the problem with us Muslims is that we are not united. We are divided. We fight amongst ourselves. If we are united, today we know that previously Muslims were at least united on the issue of Palestine. Today we are divided. There are Muslim countries which are saying no problem that Israel wants to take over the country. What's happened to the Muslim Ummah? The problem is today we Muslims fear more the human beings in this world than fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, everyone will be judged according to the capacity you have. Everyone has the capacity to do dua, we should do dua as you mentioned, rightly said. But if someone has the capacity to speak, and if he does not speak, Allah will take over his power of speech. If someone has the capacity to fight and he doesn't fight, Allah will take over his power. You know today the Muslims, at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Muslims were poor. What Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left behind was the Sahaba, was the Khulfa Rashidin. Today, we Muslims are the richest in the world. We have the black gold, we have the oil, we have the petrol, what are we? Nothing. We have been used as domats. Wealth is not required for us to follow Quran and Sunnah. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, I will not fear for my own ummah poverty as much as I will fear the richness and the wealth. Today the problem in us is because we are wealthy, we have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those Muslim countries which have the wealth, those Muslim countries which have the wealth which they can use in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are using it in the wrong way. I don't have to give examples, the world knows about it. They are using it to bribe the other people, not for the deen. Allah doesn't require us. You and me, the rubbish that we are, Allah does not require us to make his deen prevail. Allah is very clear. And Allah says in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33. In Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 29. And Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9, Allah says, Huwa allazi arthala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al-haq liyuz hira wa al deen kulli. That Allah sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions, all the other isms. And Allah says, The waqafa billahi shayda. And enough is Allah's witness once. And Allah says twice, how am I the mushrik don't like it? Allah has given a promise that this deen of Islam will prevail over all the other religions with or without us. Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. His deen Allah is sufficient will make it prevail. Allah is giving us an opportunity to do a profit job and to earn a profit's reward. Allah is giving us the opportunity to make hay while the sun is shining. And wallahi, we Muslims are going away and away from Allah and His Rasul. The only solution is we go back to Allah and His Rasul, go back to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, and inshallah you'll find that there will be peace. And the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that before the world ends, Muslims will rule the full world for seven years. And that would be the best years. And we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we don't know when that will come, we pray that may Allah make us live. To see those tears. So the solution is the Muslims should be united on the basis of Quran and the Sayyidi. Hope that answers the question.